Hello you soggy sandals left on a wet Brighton beach. This is Super Flipping Phones. New to Steam. A game apparently about you trying to flip phones out of people's hands to warn them about incoming danger. But they're just not interested. So let's see how this game plays. Press start. So controller. We will zoom controller. Quick look at the settings. You've got music, sound, score. And quality of graphics. But all you need an 8 bit uh, game. Play more cops only club. Warn everyone about everything. Alright, so it's side to side. D pad, analog stick both work. I swing your arm so radically you automatically flip phones. Keep running, keep flipping. Please don't get your don't get your good intentions evade them by jumping over them. Press A to do this. Ow. Okay, so it's a it's a endless runner. Save the people by bringing them to this box. Made of 100% re oh made of 100% recycled environmentally justified cardboard. Think of the snakes. Yes, cops do require a lot of energy. But the jump button isn't very high, so jumping also tires you. Okay, so there was a stamina bar that I wasn't seeing. Is there a stamina bar somewhere? I'll regain energy. I don't know how to stop. The game just makes me want a thing and it's just so busy. Why is that so busy? Switch falls where you want to hold. Oh, okay. Okay, so you can slow it down. Oh, I don't know whether I'm doing good or bad. In fact, I don't know how to talk to while playing this game. There's just so much going on at once. Alright, let's try again. Slap! People! Save yourselves! Save all of yourselves! Ready to go upstairs, get away from the cops. Okay, so there's, there's a sound clue that the police are coming. Let's go down, what's downstairs? Basement bargain, oh. <laughs> Basement bargain and I start doing terribly. So, is this the game? Is it just purely a run and jump at the right time sort of game? Uh, down we go. Jump, jump. Ah, uh, you ain't gonna get me. You're not gonna get me! No! Oh, you got me. And I saved no one. And what's in the present? I don't know. Nothing that I can see is in the present. Let's save these people. It says you can sort of slow down, but then it makes it... Oh no, jumping over these guys is still... Okay, so the game becomes a lot more enjoyable when we just slow down a little bit. Woo! Oh. So the problem is that you can't slow down once you get past a certain bit. Oh, darn it. Alright, is there anything more to this game? Yeah, it's relatively fun, that. Let's uh, go back home. Oh, okay. 
So we've got unlockables, so timeless classic in contemporary fashion. So we've got different crazy people. Um, have we got anything else? So there's other levels. Uh, unlocking League of Extraordinary Cops, unlocking me. Uh, more cops only club. So how do I unlock it? It doesn't really actually tell me. Have I just have I got to get everyone? Everyone! The end is coming! The end is nigh! Oh dear. Cops got me again there. Damn it. Alright, this time. This time we'll do it. This time we will definitely, definitely do it. Oh no! Jump up, 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 up. Jump, slap, slap, way! Hey! Oh dear. Oh, please, cop. Uh, dog. So, having the same problem, though, is uh, that when you want to take the stairs, the police are coming so thick and fast. But you are. Uh, Quite hard to actually take the stairs. Well, I like the stairs. Stairs are a good add-on. It's a, it's an extra button for you to have to worry about. So flip 25 cops. So what we've got to do? Hit cops this time. Seems a bit uh, controversy to what I was supposed to be doing, but let's give it a go. Got our stamina back a bit. Slap him. Jump the dog. Don't want to be messing with no uh, god please dog. Okay, so is it 25 in one session or 25 in total to unlock the next next level? But anyway, we're gonna jump cut it there, and I'll bring you back when we've got the uh, the next level. I think you've seen everything there is to see in this bit. Stick around on a single floor too long and the police will call in reinforcements. Okay, that's an interesting thing to add on now. So I don't really know why you can have told us that when the uh, the game first started, but never mind. has a specialised cop. This caffeinated cop will stay in hiding and strike when you don't notice him. Um, okay. I think we're still inside the uh, shopping centre. On some floors you'll find power-ups. What we'll do, press X to use an item. Same button as it is to use the stairs. It's got 30,000 in three games straight. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, so we've unlocked the next level, but let's, uh, let's give it a look. Boom. League of Extraordinary Cops, what's different about this one? Uh, nothing. So that was the shopping centre, and that was... Alright, play League of Extraordinary Cops. Just looks like the same level again. 
Oh well, it was going well up to this point. Let's see whether the other levels are any different. Looks like someone here overdosed. Anyway, fat chance that you can flip this guy. Oh, there's actually unpassable police officers now. He may seem high and mighty, but those still don't seem too dangerous. High hat though. Nice hat though. Am I supposed to just go under that? That was no explanation of what I'm supposed to do there. Guess I'm supposed to go under him. Hello, Play to Save fans. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Super Flipping Phones, uh, a game which I'll be honest, hand on heart, I brought because it looked terrible and I quite thoroughly enjoyed playing it. Uh, not as much depth as maybe I would have liked for its price point, but a very enjoyable, very tight game. So, what is Super Flipping Phones? It's um, a runner, platforming, jumping over things sort of game, but it's got quite a nice theme running through it. So the theme that's running through this game is that you are a madman running around a shopping centre with your hands flailing in the air knocking out people's phones from their hands. Uh, the game uh, fail state is that you run out of stamina or energy and the way you drain your energy is by jumping which I use it very little but bumping into the cops will warn you uh, wear you out. So you have to manage your energy levels a little bit there and you've got the three floors of the shopping centre in which to do that. Uh, you will notice that there are some various different enemies and baddies out there. So you've got your standard cops, these you've got to jump over. You've got your dogs, these will sometimes jump. Uh, you've got your undercover cops so far which I've found which look like cafe barises and then they start running at you. And more interestingly though, you start getting a shielded guy who can't be run through, has to be jumped over, and a guy on stilts who you don't have to jump over. This was the one that really started throwing a stick my way because I was used to seeing things and you press jump, so... They've done very well with the enemy variety in this um, for a simple game and they provided uh, a good mix of challenges and different things to watch out for, so... As well as watching out for the cops coming towards you, you have to watch out for which cops coming towards you. The game is all based around a score system. Your score goes up uh, as you save people, you get them back to your box. And at the start of each game it gives you a cute little pop theme of what you have to save people from or what you have to warn them about. Things like warn them that the upcoming Star Wars movie is coming out and gives it some ridiculous number. Uh, and the unlockables in this seem to be characters and what I thought was levels, which did slightly disappoint me. I wanted to see how they were going to mix it up a little bit more, but it seemed to be uh, the level of cops that you're actually upgrading rather than the level levels that you're unlocking. But it's a very tight game, it controls very well. Uh, started off with the visuals seeming very noisy to me, but they did very much calm down after a while uh, and I started seeing what was going on and you actually start realising that the environment isn't there just to get in your way but you actually can use that for levels so when you push along a billboard it will knock out anyone in front of you uh, while you're running. So quite a nice interesting game, I don't think it's anything I, like I've played before, I mean I've played runners before so if you like what you see from the video above give the, give the game a go, the, the music stays well, the graphics are cute enough and there does seem to be a stuff to unlock uh, and also they've done well by keeping the challenges challenging. I managed to do some in the hour or so that I played but I still had some more to do and I think I am gonna pick this one up and put this one down from time to time because it is that sort of game for me, it's a nice pick up and put down game. So, super flipping phones, you get a play and say recommendation. Enjoy the world, world. Something slightly different for you today. We're not going to have a rant, we're going to have uh, an explanation. Um, it's a good analogy that someone was telling me about indie gaming. Um, so, smaller studios and things like that. So, people who tell me I should give them a bit more of an easier time. The way that I see it is if I was to build somewhere to live and I only had two or three workmen to work with, 
in a smaller budget, I'd have two choices. I can make a very big generic house, or I can make a much smaller house and make it a lot prettier and a lot a lot more unique. And I think this is something that indie developers should remember and should realise because they see a lot of games that come out and get released and they're big open world games and they were talking about three or four men studios and it's sort of like how can you concentrate on this much of a game and make it tight Skyrim only just about gets away with it by the amount of content in there and if you think about it even games like Skyrim the amount of boring wasteless time there is around the map means that it's just not a good experience so my plea to indie studios and it's not a rant, it's just to remember the size of the team that you've got and the quality of the product that they can produce. If you haven't got enough to produce a lot of good content, do some smaller content and just make it extremely tight. And that way, if that thing is then a hit, you can then release game after game after that. I mean, look at Five Nights at Freddy's. It really didn't try to shoot over the top or do itself any favours by making the game more complex than it needed to be and just from that one success of that game that went on to, to another game to another game to another game I mean it may have its detractors and people who hate it but for what it wanted to offer a scale experience it really did do it very well and I think they did that just by remembering that being one person being one guy it all has to come down to the fact and the fact of that being that you only have so many people to make so much of a project to make a beautiful project, not a big project. But anyway, enjoy the world, world.